Hello, hello. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Nadia Adam. I'm a Vedic astrologer and psychic medium. So I got many questions about how we're supposed to read a chart when it comes to transit. Like how are we going to analyze that? Because I've been posting a videos in the last few weeks which were connected to the transit and how this planet, how that planet will do in this particular sign. And as we know, that planets are keep moving and will keep changing, right? So today we're going to talk about Ashtak Virgo. So this is, uh, this will be a very short video. This will be like a quick tutorial of you to know how you can read Ashtak Varga point in order for you to be able to navigate and understand how you can read and analyze the transit according to your own chart, all right? So, um, first and foremost, Ashtak Varga table, you can find it anywhere in any software. I believe also in the apps like Astro Sage and Cosmic Insight, I believe they have um, Ashtag Varga table, all right? So right now here, I'm going to use um, Jagannath Hora software, all right? So this is Ashtag Varga table. Let's say, for example, this is our chart. This is the Rashi chart that we have, okay? And this is Ashtag Varga table. So what, what we're supposed to do on this? First and foremost, I'm going to divide my explanation to two parts, okay? So we're going to talk about this Sarvashtak Varga, and then we have these small, small boxes. Again, this is, will be a quick tutorial. So I hope after this video, you'll be able to know how to read Ashtak Varga table accordingly to your birth chart, all right? So Sarvashtak Varga, as you can see here, each house, it has a number, isn't it? So this is called Samudhi Ashtak Varga. So this is denotes to each house. Let's say, for example, you can see this is five. That means this is the ascendant. So the ascendant, the point of ascendant is 28. The point of second house, which is 25. The third house here, seven, which is 25. The fourth house here, which is Scorpio, it's 30. All right? And so on. So Sarvashtak Varga, or this particular table, as you can see, the first number here, it denotes to the first house. This is will be that's mean this is will be the tenth house, this is will be the eleventh house, and so on. All right. So what are what are these numbers? So these numbers actually accumulation of all planets added together. There be Nashtak Varga. Um, what I'm trying to say here, let's say for example, the ascendant here, you can see this is sun, right? So this is four, add eight, add four, add zero, add three add on six and on three as a result it will give me a total of 28 all right same thing let's say for example what does that mean i have 25 point here that's mean number point three from sun four points from moon two point from mars four point from mercury five from jupiter four from venus three from saturn accumulate them all sum them all it will give me 25 points Okay, so now what's the purpose of this or what it denotes? What is 28, 25 or what is it exactly? So the rule said 28 is the average. Below 28, it can be quite not good. Okay, above 28, that's mean it's good. So the midpoint here is 28. This point can be also identified or it's the way how you can see the strength of each house in your chart. All right. So it shows you the strength of each house in your chart. Does that mean I have seventh house here? This is seven house, right? Seven house is 25. That's mean my seven house is weak. No, it doesn't mean it's weak. Because you, okay, you have to see it, for example, from Venus. If, let's say, I want to see it from Moon. The Moon is in the 12th. This is the Moon. And opposing of the Moon, that's mean 33. That's mean the seven house from Moon is giving me 33 point. So you can see, yeah? It's not that having low point does not mean the house is weak. But, of course, it's mean you need to pay attention to it. It's required some work. 
it's required some dedication to stabilize that particular house. All right. So this is in general about the Sarvashtak Varga, which is this one, which is the big one. All right. So now let's talk about the Binashtak Varga for each planet. Usually the, the box of the Ascendant, most of even other softwares, other app, they do not consider it. So you just can cancel this one. All right. So we're going to focus on the planets here. Sorry. We're going to focus on the planet. We can see Sun giving for the Ascendant four point. Mercury giving the Ascendant eight point. Mars four. Moon is zero. Jupiter is three and so on. The theory said the mid or average is supposed to be four. Maximum point is eight. The lowest point, which is for sure zero. Okay. So below four, it can be quite critical. All right. So for example, three, it can be, huh? It can kind of sustainable. Two, it can be quite bad. One can be mm, really bad. Zero. Zero means the planet won't give you any result. Like literally the planet when it's transiting that particular house and is giving you only zero point, that means it's dead. You cannot expect anything from that planet. That means the significator or the strength of that planet is dead. All right. Of course, I'm just going to explain for you more what does that mean. All right. So let's say, for example, I have moon. Moon, let's say right now in the sky, is in the Scorpio. So how many points is going to give me? It's going to give me four points. That means, uh, okay, decent. That means during these two days of moon uh, in Scorpio, it's going to be decent. My mood will be okay, okay-ish. Not very good, not very low. Let's say, for example, moon is transiting Gemini. Here is 11 house. Where is 11 house? Here. It's giving me seven point. Well, that means my moon is good. My moon is happy. Most probably I might get something. Maybe I will expand. Maybe, I don't know, some good events, some good news are going to come to me when moon is transiting Gemini. All right? It's just the same rule. You have to apply for every planet. Let's say, for example, we have Saturn. Saturn is transiting the Ascendant. Saturn is transiting Leo. It's giving me three points. Usually Saturn giving three points, that means it's kind of decent. Because Saturn very, very rare give you more than five or six points. I mean, it's just very rare. Saturn always kind of the love to give low points. Okay? So three, it can be considered as an average for Saturn. All right? Let's say, for example, um, Saturn is transiting a cancer here, which is the 12th house, right? Where is 12th house, which is here? That's mean five points. That's mean Saturn here, which is excellent. That's mean it's excellent. Saturn here can actually give a good result, can give the person potential, let's say, for example, to distant travel, can, for example, give the person a, a marriage, okay? Or relationship, or a new job, a new contract, and so on. So the same rule apply to everyone. I mean, to, to every planet, sorry. <laughs> the same rule apply to every planet. Now, the key. When I supposed to check the Ashtag Varga? You have to pay attention to Ashtag Varga if you are going through the planet that is activated in your chart. Does, it doesn't mean that I have to check every single day what is moon doing, what is Mars doing? Where is Mercury and all? It doesn't work like that. You have to check only on a planet that is active on with you. All right. So the Mahadasha, Antardasha, and Priyantradasha. And mostly, mostly, I believe Antardasha and Priyantradasha are the most important, uh, the most important two planets that you need to always check their Ashtak Varga point. Okay. So let's say, for example, I'm going to Rahu Dasha, all right? I can neglect Rahu because, you know, you can see the, the planets here, we don't have Rahu. So Rahu technically will only depend on Saravashtak. That's mean how strong that house, how 
how strong or how capable the particular house to hold Rahu. All right. So it's only in the case of Rahu K2, you have to only focus on Sarvashta. Let's say, for example, I have right now, Rahu is transiting my whatever, like, for example, my nine house. All right. So we have a nine house here. Let me delete this. Okay. 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 So let's say, for example, we have Rahu, right? To talk about Rahu. Rahu Mahadasha. Rahu is transiting the nine house. I don't have Rahu here. I have only the Sarvashtak of the, the nine house is 24. Okay. I can say like, well, maybe during this Rahu uh, transit right now that's going to happen in areas for one and a half year, it will be a bit decent. It's kind of decent. It's giving me 24. I believe, or according to my research and experience, the only time where you have to be worried when the points is extremely low, below 20. Below 20, you can feel like, mm, okay, I have to be careful. But if Rahu K2 giving, uh, transiting a house that's giving 24, 21, 22, it can be quite decent. Rahu is neutral. It doesn't care whether the house is strong, whether the house is low, whatever. I just have a purpose. I have a mission right now. I want to execute whatever uh, uh, the task given to me to the nine house. So most probably the person here, regardless of any other planets, regardless of whether his or her life is good or bad, Rahu here will try to give the person a spiritual knowledge, will try to get the person to foreign land, will try to get person, I don't know, um, getting higher education and all this stuff. Okay? So Rahu Ketu, it's like a neutral, but of course you have to pay attention on the houses. All right? So, okay, so it is a Rahu Dasha. Let's say, for example, Venus and Kardasha. Venus is transiting, where is Venus? Let's say Venus is transiting the Ascendant. It's giving me six point, which is excellent. And the house itself is 28. That's Venus good. That's mean currently during Venus transit in Leo, it will give me a good result. It will give me positive outcome. All right. So let's talk. Let's say, let's say I have one case. Let's say, for example, let me erase this. Let's say, for example, the transit of the planet, it's giving me very low, but the house so hold on. Let me see here what we have. Okay. Let's say, for example, Saturn is in Capricorn. Uh, sorry, is in Scorpio. Okay. Saturn is in the fourth house of Scorpio. It's transiting. Let's say here is Saturn. Okay. Let's say Saturn is here. Saturn in Scorpio is giving only two points. Most of us will think like, oh my God, that's mean this is going to be a bad transit of Saturn. My next two and a half years mean it will be a miserable. It's not always the case. Why? If you look at the Saravashtak Varga of the house itself, it's pretty high point. It's giving 30. That's mean, even though the planet gives low point, that's mean yes, it might manifest for you some trouble. Yes, it might uh, manifest for you some difficulties, but the house is strong, so it will be able to withstand. It will be able to withstand. It will be able to defeat or to support itself because of the Sarvashtak Varga I have, it's pretty high. It's a different case if, let's say, I have the Sarvashtak Varga is low, and the transit of planet is low. If these two, the house and the planet, both of them are low, then for sure, for sure, you have to take precaution. Okay? So uh, that's it. I think it's more than enough. I hope it was helpful. Again, it's you have to use this uh, concept or this... Um, yeah, this concept of Ashtakvarga only when you are trying to decode your 
um, pre-antradasya and antradasya. If you want to see how the things will be, how the things going to work out with me, oh, Venus in transiting a new sign, what's what's the outcome, what can happen, you have to use the Ashtak Varga. All right? So, yeah, that's it for today. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was easy, squeezy <laughs> tutorial about Ashtak Varga because I really love this concept which I do believe most of astrologer, I don't know, they don't use it, they don't like it, maybe they seeing it very complex. Of course, there are many, many things can be discussed about this. Um, this can be the whole course. <laughs> we can create the whole course out of only Ashtak Varga concept, but I just want to make it short. I just want to make it easy, squeezy for people who are new in, in Jyotish to understand and able to navigate their chart by themselves. All right. So yeah, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and wish you to have a wonderful and beautiful day. And if you need any consultation, if you have any comments, feedback, please, my website link is in the description box and please do not forget to like, subscribe and comment. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.